Okay, let's take a look at um, actually loading and working with images within FTK. So the first thing you're going to do, obviously, is in, after you've installed FTK, is go ahead and run it. And you're going to be brought up to this main screen. And there's a couple different ways you can work with it. But the first thing is, is we're going to look at just uh, loading images so that we can review them. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to click on File, and you're going to do Add Evidence Item. That is where it actually brings up the ability to, to load images that you've pulled in. Then it gives you this option where it's physical drive, logical drive, or image file. And we're going to be working with specifically with image file. So we're going to go ahead and click that. And then we're going to enter the path where our image files are located. Now some image files, depending on how you've created them, they may just be one single file. Or they may be a multitude of files. You can see here um, I've got a series of them that are uh, located. Uh, currently uh, the way FTK works is not only will it uh, manage and maintain forensic images, meaning you can bring them in, but it's capable of reading VMware uh, virtual disks, and that's kind of what I'm going to work with today. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and load up this uh, VDK, and what I'm looking at is you see how this particular one is it has no extra extensions on it, but you've got these ones, twos, threes, fours, five, six. That's basically the sub slices of an image. And when you do forensic captures, you can do the exact same thing where you can say, I only want my image size to be uh, as the size of like a CD or a size of a disc, uh, any of those type of things. So you click on, on the first one and it will go ahead and load all the rest of them in for you. Go ahead and click finish. It takes usually a second or two. And what we can do here is you can click on this and you'll see that in this particular case there's only one partition that shows up, a physical partition but also if you start to expand it you'll see some other stuff that's in here now depending on the size and shape of the disk it may take it a little bit longer uh, to load this particular one looks like it's about 20 gig so it'll take a second for it to actually expand out Okay, now you, what you see is, this is common whenever you load up images that are full disk images. You'll see root, unallocated space, and orphan. Um, root is going to be where the actual file system is located. Unallocated space is a place where um, uh, e either disk has been freed or um, it's uh, available for uh, writing. Now sometimes you'll find files that are in here, sometimes you won't. It's all kind of relative. Um, as you can see here right now I've got what looks like three or four different files but they're all size zeros so that means there's really nothing in here for you for me to review um, this other one is orphan sometimes there'll be files in here too this is what happens when you actually delete files sometimes they'll show up in here if uh, the file has been partially overwritten so it's a, a piece of it is there now when you delete a file off your machine one of the reasons why we can get it back is because it doesn't actually delete the file. It deletes the pointer to it. When you load them up in FTK, load a whole image up, and you find files that have been removed but are physically still there, uh, a lot of times they'll show up with like red X's, and you'll be able to actually review them and pull them back. Uh, but if you look at this particular one, this happens to be a Windows 7 machine that we have a partition. So we're looking at the root, and something that, uh, that your experience will eventually bring with you is just looking at the file system right at uh, the directories, you can tell what kind of uh, machine that you're looking at. You don't have to have it tell you. This one happens to be labeled that, and it's only because the disk is labeled that. Uh, but you look at certain things like program data, um, the users folder, uh, doc, uh, how document well documents and settings not so much uh, uh, documents and settings is a is a uh, like Windows XP and forward but if you look at program data that is definitely a Windows 7 functionality um, users is also something that you only see in Windows 7 so with that in mind let's shrink this for a second and let's load up an actual um, XP one we'll go load it, uh, another one up real quick have one available. And here's an XP uh, professional. So. 
and you can see here now when you look at this you see um, I've got documents and settings which I had in the other one I don't have anything that says program data um, I also don't have any uh, thing that says users remember in Windows XP users are located actually underneath documents and settings where in Windows 7 they separated those out and put users up here and they put their their documents and stuff underneath that so there's ways of telling us Unix does work sort of the same way you'll see certain file system types that will tell you whether or not um, what versions you're dealing with uh, these are just things you'll get over time also if you look at this XP professional see this uh, X that's in config MSI it means that's a deleted file or and it I can recover this so I would be able to right click on this and I could export the file or files and it will pull back what's in here and we'd be able to kind of figure out what's going on uh, it looks like an acrobat.exe is in here um, and you can see that right here if you look right there um, let's see if we can find any other things that are inside here as we scroll down not seeing anything specific. That doesn't mean there's not anything there. It just happens to be that it's there. So, what, uh, and let's look at unallocated space on this one. Got some stuff, but it doesn't look like there's anything here. It looks like these are all zeroed. And let's see if we got any orphans. Yeah, we have quite a few. Um, so you might be able these files are not they're recoverable but they're not uh, they're not usable uh, in the sense that I could actually get it back and recover it but I could get it back and actually look at it or I can just look at it right here uh, with this because uh, it's got a built-in hex editor um, down here in the bottom and start looking at them and see if there's anything that's to them like let's see if there's anything to this particular accwiz.exe uh, scroll down and you gotta always check this because it depends on what you're investigating um, another thing you can do which is really nice about uh, FDK if you're investigating a specific directory um, you can uh, sort them by date just by clicking on that particular date function and then you can see 12-6-2010 is the one end and 9-14-2011 so this was the oldest or the newest of the files so this would be the one I'd be most interested in after that everything you know is 2010 if it doesn't fit within the timeline that you're actually looking at you can probably just disregard them like let's say we were looking at this particular file system and we're like oh the incident occurred in uh, 2012 well there's nothing in here that's 2012 so there's not going to be anything that's relevant to what you're looking for um, now another thing to recover files or directories like let's say I wanted to recover everything that's in this directory if I right click on the temp directory and I do export files it will ask me where I want to export them to and then you just basically place them there and it will export that whole directory same thing holds true if I want to get a file uh, a specific file if I right click on that file and do export files it does the same thing and it'll export that particular file as long as it's up in this top, uh, this portion here, and it's not one of the, uh, and not in the orphaned area. Um, the other thing that we can do is right now this is basically in a read-only format, so we're able to review uh, what's going on here and export stuff out. That's all that we can really do with this particular uh, system. This is and that's fine. There's not a problem with that. Another way you can actually mount systems is instead of. Uh, doing it file you still have to file add evidence but you could do a file um, mount image and what this does is that instead of it being accessible through FTK you can mount it into your file system so that it becomes a drive letter on your machine and what you see here is you can see it's picking up the the um, XP one because it's the last one I picked up uh, that I was highlighted on and its mount type is physical, logical, what drive letter, and what type do you want? A block device read only, which is usually where you want it, or read writable, uh, or file system uh, read only. I usually leave it at block device read only, and then you click mount. 
and what it'll do is it'll mount it and that physical drive will now show up so what you can do here is go into Explorer and now I've got a new logical disk and you can see oops, close over here you're gonna see the same file system uh, that you have here documents and settings program files these extra ones are things that you're not gonna see uh, that because this is uh, based on retrieving it forensically and you can see things that are in there like this stands for bad clusters uh, this is other security mechanisms that are in there uh, these you will not be able to see on a live file system you'll only be able to see them on a forensic they don't always contain stuff so they're not necessarily things you need to concern yourself with uh, just be aware that you won't see them when you load it up so now what you can do is you can go through here and you can uh, look at things uh, a little more closely you can grab files and copy them out um, you can you can actually double click and execute them uh, so you got to be careful if you're working with a file system that you're not familiar with um, you could uh, ac you could um, access a virus you could uh, create you could create any number of problems with that but some interesting things that you can do with it if you're this way is uh, like I can right click on this and I can do I can run my antivirus scanner over it and scan the whole thing um, I can use other tools uh, that were that are normally just accessible from my file system from my machine against the the machine uh, against the image itself where if I'm only accessing it through FTK I won't have that option so that and basically in a nutshell is how you do um, FTK another uh, and export uh, images and, ex and uh, export files uh, when you're ready to when you're done with an item you can just do remove evidence item and it will pull it off the system uh, some other functions that are nice to have that are sometimes very useful um, is you can do an export directory listing and it will push out all of the uh, values in a comma separated value uh, you can also do uh, if you click right on the very top of an image you can do um, verify drive image and what this will do is it will go through and it will generate an MD5 hash and that's the same MD5 hash that you use when you correlate with another analyst or whatever when they're, when they're um, they've made either the image or that they've sent you one going hey look I've got uh, this particular image file uh, can you verify your MD5 hash so I'm not going to finish that up another thing you can do is um, we've talked about obtain protective files this is the protected memory files um, what this will do is it will uh, it will try to break those uh, passwords that are contained in your uh, when you're surfing on the internet and you fill out forms or you save passwords in your browser that's what that's going to be for um, the other thing uh, we talked about export directory listing just a second ago we also let's see so another one remove evidence item image mounting but there was one more thing I wanted to do Oh, here it is. You gotta get all the way down to the file system. If you get down to the file system, even like the root, you've got an option here called the export the file hash list, which is basically it's gonna MD5 everything that's in whatever directory you you select. So like right here, if I click on this and I do export file hash list, it'll ask me um, where I want to put that. And let's say I'm gonna drop it to my temp directory, and I'm gonna say. Uh, temp underscore dir hash list just something so that I have it there dot CSE I'm going to export that out and then I can go over here and go down into that temp directory and you can see um, here's the hash list And now what you have, and now what you have is you have the MD5 and the hashes for um, all the files um, of that particular directory. Um, you can see here what you got. So it's, um, and then you can use these to do 
other correlations if you want to do searches on the internet for particular files um, you can use these uh, you can use these mv5 hashes to be able to surf that so that's kind of that in a nutshell um, so now you've got to be able to see that and that's basically how you work with images um, within the file system and then you keep notes as you go along and you uh, basically start to build your report as you're doing your analysis. You're going, look, I found this, I mounted this, I did a scan, I found a virus in here, I didn't, um, here's the list of files, here's the timeline. You start to get all your pieces put together. And like I said, that in a nutshell is how you use uh, FTK to mount images, export files, and to mount them as file systems. Hope you enjoyed.